Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and our monthly uh, porch chat, garden chat, update behind the scenes answering your questions from uh, the videos within roughly the past month or so. So we do this every month and it is a beautiful day out here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we are soaking up all this lovely weather we have. We are. We are. So we are going to, like I said, recap on some of the videos that we have done, not all of them. Really what we have started to do, I think it works best, is to I just kind of comb through and find questions that are asked multiple times or just interesting comments, that kind of thing. And then we will address them. And we also kind of give you an update on things that are happening um, here at the nursery and the house and all things Creekside. Yes. Yes, all these things have been going on lately. Yeah, anything you want to talk about? Um, or do you always want to jump right on in? No, I don't have anything in particular. Just, um, you know, we we'll go ahead and start talking about all the questions or... Yeah, I mean, know. somebody's just down to business today now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, sure. He's not very chatty. But, you know, hey, <laughs> why worry about that, right? Oh, I know. All right, so let's see. Where are we going to start? Do we have a question about the landscape job in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got you covered, boo. Good. Okay. All right. Start things out with a bang. <laughs> Y'all get ready. Hold on tight. Here we go. <laughs> All right. This is from. Um, so before I talk about this, a lot of the because um, what has been happening in our life right the past month really has been getting the potting machine bringing the potting machine into the fold of Creekside using it a couple of times um, production because of course we are a grower retailer we grow the plants that we sell to our customers so we're in production mode we've had multiple plant deliveries we're going to continue to have multiple plant deliveries and then yeah just end of winter going into spring i know some of y'all are like what are you talking about well remember we're in north carolina we're a little advanced around here and spring is knocking on the door yeah we we start pumping out info about plants and everything much sooner than most of our northern friends right you know so we we're wanting to really talk about it now as so we're you know it's what we're which doing that's what we're doing and we're you know we're going to get warm warm is spring will be here soon and we want to get everyone excited and start getting the info out so you have time to know what Make you plans. want to get. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So. so getting in here right away is a, a comment, not really a question, comment from Robert. He says, but you don't grow your own plants. You buy from someone else and repot them. A grower to me is someone who starts the plants from seed. I do appreciate your knowledge and like your videos. Yeah, I, I'm glad Robert likes the videos and he, he enjoys our you content. Know, content and but he's wrong. Um, so, I mean, it's, that's, that's not correct. Um, that that I mean it's <laughs> I mean if you want to go in that direction I mean you're going to then Pleasant View where we get our cutting from is not a grower you know because the that the cutting comes from a mother plant right. you know so I'm the second in line with that so and and Pleasant View is rooting the cutting that comes to me and then I have to then grow it the right way. So then it's in full bloom and it's glory to be able to get to the At homeowner. the right time. And then, and then that would mean that you homeowners then take that grande and put it in your garden. You're not growers either. You're just repotting that plant into your landscape and you just walk away. Right. So as I don't understand why Robert said that. You and know, I do. Emphatic that way in a way it's not a grower. I mean, I've grown from seed. It's the same thing. Right. I mean, it's the same process. So, and I will say too that I think there is a misconception too yeah. that a misunderstanding. Maybe he just misunderstands. What misunderstands we do. where the plant comes from. So yeah. you can, there basically are. I think I'm getting this right. Basically, there are two ways that you take a plant, right? It's about like an annual. Mm -hmm. You start it from seed, or you take it from a vegetative cutting, and that's where you, like Jerry was saying, you have the mother plant. You snip some of that plant off of the mother plant. You root it 
you and then you grow it out now of course you have tissue cultures from you know oh, yeah. perennials and then go you've down got the whole road with tissue culture. tissue cultures and then you've got divisions of plants right so like your perennials you, you know you can like like a hosta right so you divide or, or tissue culture so that there's there's more than one way if to grow a plant. I was just taking a plant and I was just repotting plants, which is what he said, that means we repot it. We put it in a pot and we walk away. Right. That's not what we do. No. I mean, we are managing the growth of that plant and we're watching everything. I mean, it's, it's growing in a greenhouse is not the same. No. I mean, so it, it's, 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 I'm not going to even get into everything that we have to do on a daily basis to grow the plant to where it's sellable to a consumer because when we we're taking the cutting and we're and not every cutting is you know for the majority because it's a proven winter cutting it's a proven plant I would say when we get the 84 <laughs> they sell us 82 they charge us for 82 because they're counting that two of the 84 are probably not going to be any good right I would say a lot of the times we get it's 84 right and then sometimes throughout the process there's just a weak cutting you know well we're gonna get into that don't get yeah. it, don't get don't go too far on that one yeah okay so, so. but anyway I, I mean i'm glad robert likes watching this i'm not trying to you know get hot and bothered by it but i, I do think that you just we just have to be careful about being emphatic you know because it, that's that's just even us and i'm i am going to be emphatic in the fact of he's wrong and that the fact that we we are a grower we grow plants not everyone can do what we do so yeah all right um the next question is from nita says do you sell all of those hanging baskets <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah pretty much we do we, do. we yeah. um i think i don't know there have been times when we've overdone it <laughs> you right know? So, and it does seem like some years just like with any other Last plant some way. plants will sell like some years it is gangbusters for hanging baskets. hanging baskets and we will sell out before mother's day yes. and then yes. some years we're like oh my gosh i can't give the things away yeah so, we had a lot of hanging baskets last year i don't really know sometimes it's weather or it's just However, it is what it is it is but it's, for the most part yes yeah. we sell all of those hanging baskets and re we, we do not sell wholesale so we sell to directly to the customer um, when we first started out there was one one or two local garden centers that we would sell to on a small scale but um, really since 2020 we have not had a need to sell to wholesalers and we sell all directly to our customers that come visit us yeah yep yeah so we had to grow it out really well to make it beautiful and i mean it takes a long time to get a basket right i mean that's why they started so early yes exactly there's exactly. a lot of management process in that hanging basket to get it to look full and full of bloom before it comes to you and that's why right. they you know they're sometimes a little more money than what folks expect them to be but this yeah. is a lot to it yeah um Continuing on with the production side of the videos, um, Janet asks, how do all of those plants get watered? So it's, there's different w methods. Um, hanging baskets all have a dripper, but as of right now, I'm managing the water because we're on a scale of size that allows us to manually kind of keep track mm -hmm. of that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just sort of managing that. So everything uh, right now is being hand watered. Yes, it is. Because, and why do we do that? Because you have to manage it. You can't go in there and flood the plants. Why can't you go in there and like yeah, flood the plants really with like water? I don't really like automation right now since I'm at a size where I can control the water on my own and we can, we can either train people to do it because it's, it's still winter and we still have like lots of like just the other week it's lots of clouds and rain so the plants don't need water so then you you're you're having to manage your automation to not do it or you forget so it's just better right now and the root to, systems aren't as big they're not as big and then you you could drown them you know you can drown that pot that plant that you repot you know <laughs> and and god <laughs> He's terrible, y'all. Yeah. He's terrible. <laughs> so like but like caliber coas, right? You cannot saturate that caliber coa pot right now because the the root ratio to the available soil is very small. Now in 
we'll fast forward in a couple of months when the sun is out all the time and it is hot and oh, we've yeah, got man. massive root systems like you can't bring on keep, all the automation yeah you we bring on tons of automation yeah, so right now of, it's hand watering and jerry's very specific i don't even like to go up there and water sometimes because he is so particular and has it down to such a science and an art of knowing when to water, when not to water, when to fertilize, when not to fertilize. And that's very hard for him to teach other people because that's just the gift that he has as the grower is to see that and to know, and from experience, we're gonna wait and water this because of the cloud cover or the temperature or whatever. Yeah, especially in the green greenhouse, like it was just the other day or whenever it was, it was being cloudy and so we, we were dry and the plants were fine the whole time while it's cloudy cloudy and it was somewhat warm so the heat wasn't running so that's the only thing that's another thing that can mess with you is that you're you're trying to keep things somewhat dry because you're cloudy and you don't want to get things wet and damp in the greenhouse but then your heat's kicking on because it's having to keep everything warm and it can it can then cause the plants to stress at night right i've had that happen so it, it it's just what it is is is, a, is morning and afternoon it's watching morning and afternoon mm -hmm. and that's just how you go about deciding on when to water or when something needs something it's right just checking it out every day yes yeah. uh sandy is talking about the potting machine she asked, is the potting machine on wheels? You mentioned somewhat casually that it was moved from one end of the annex to the other. That's incredible how many plants you all got planted in one day. What satisfaction to see the greenhouse fill up. Great job to all. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's on wheels. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, because we rode down there, not that we couldn't have got the wheels, but we rode down there and found out that the wheels weren't on that package. Yeah. For whatever reason, I had always seen it with wheels. We and thought, I thought it, was, it was coming with wheels. I had planned on wheels. I had planned on how we were going to use it with wheels. So yeah. And then we got there and the wheels Ooh. weren't on. But right. actually, it was a good thing that the wheels weren't on because if the wheels had been on, it would not have fit on the trailer. Yeah, it would have been a little so bit. So the of wheels ended up at the back of the truck on the way home. Yeah. So, so yes. yes, it is on wheels. We hook it up to the tractor and we move it where we want to. We could even move it out into the field we if could we want. Take wanted. it out in the field and hook it up to a generator and plant moms. Or lots of shrubs, shrubs in a different or, location or something. Right. Yeah. So we that didn't makes want it so handy. With trailers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so the one that I was trying to stop you from talking on this one. <laughs> this is from um, Kelly. Kelly says, "Good morning. Quick question. Approximately how many of these sweet little ba plant babies do you lose to them dying off for whatever reason, like throughout the growing Say season?" It again. Um, approximately how many of these sweet little plant babies do you uh, lose due to them dying off for whatever reason? It's not that, I mean, it's not that much unless we just have, well, last year we had a bit of a catastrophic event in production one because there was no heat. This year we have heat right? because we had the odd 18 degrees starting at six o'clock at night and it went all the way through the night. So everything froze in that greenhouse. So the stuff that couldn't take freeze it it was it died but um i mean for the most part since there that that was the one thing that got us in the proven winters was that i found as a grower that these plants have such strong genetics mm -hmm. that they're they're easy to manage and grow in the greenhouse so mm -hmm. we don't lose that many plants no you know um so that that same thing happens that for the homeowner they they right. find that these plants perform well for them so that's why they keep coming back every year and buying them um so yeah like that you know 84 strip most of the time is april there might be four of them in there that end up doing something weird you know that kind of thing. But I would say, as a percentage, it is extremely low. Yeah, so that's why I that's why I say, yeah, I mean, it we're we're taking that the cutting the rooted cutting and we're growing it out and we're we're working on that plant. We're we're taking away its water. We're when you make it grow some roots. We're stressing it. We're giving it the fertilizer. I mean, when by the time it gets to the homeowner, it's ready. I mean, it's it's pretty proven. Yes. From us. Yes. You know, so that's why, like, buying a shrub, I suggest, no, I wouldn't buy much anything smaller than a gallon to a three-gallon. Anything smaller than that, lots of times, you know, it just depends. I mean, mm -hmm. but, you know, on the flip side of that, I mean, 
spring meadow has kind of come up with a way with that quick turn it's a mm -hmm. court mm -hmm. and it, it that's what we get mm -hmm. and it's pretty i mean it's solid it's I very mean, solid it, so they have because because they've had that thing over multiple seasons where they've pruned it back pruned it back and pruned it back mm -hmm. so they've perfected a way to make a stable court that's going to be you know proven for you to be successful in your garden by the time it gets to you at a small size right and I'll sometimes say, the larger size the larger root ball is more right. successful in your perennials and your shrubs yeah. yeah and so i'll say this too so um when we are trialing plants and so like from other different breeders different areas um, like we have some petunias that we're growing right now that were sent to us and this was it was simply as a test to see how we like them as the grower and we had couple of different varieties one is doing great and is beautiful and one came out really strong and then all of a sudden like this whole section of them it's, just it's definitely them went I down mean, i mean they just they just started dying off like yeah. crazy and it's not that anything that we did differently because oh. like literally there's a row of this one petunia that was gorgeous then it started dying next door is a different kind of petunia it and it's right doing after great i had given them some fertilizer the only thing i think is that petunia did not like the fertilizer right so it's interesting. So that's why genetics play a huge part yeah. in plants and all plants are not created equal. They are not. Like petunias. All petunias are not equal. Yeah. And a cutting variety of a petunia, like a bubble gum, is a much stronger petunia than a petunia that's been generated like a from a seed. Yeah. And it is not as reliable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. This is from Braun in uh, New South Wales, Australia. 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 Um, says, hi folks, you've probably already mentioned this and I've missed it, but how much soil does the hopper hold? And is there a mixing arm in the hopper or do you have to load the potting Sorry, mix and hopper. fertilizer, etc., pre-mixed? Well, there's yeah, a couple I know, of questions yeah, there. that's good questions. Um, they, I mean, there's a chain in the hopper, but the hopper will hold up to four yards, which is which is good in a way for us is one reason why we chose the hopper and there's pluses and minuses to that but that way we're not having to reload it so much because mm -hmm. we, we we run you know we're we're smaller than like major greenhouses so we can load it up and just use it all day and not have to mess with that again mm -hmm. so um we are liquid fertilizing all that so all that material that's being now our shrubs that go out in perennials they get a slow release then after the fact so we're not putting it into the soil and mixing it so it has a chain in there and it's bringing it along and it's getting driven up to the drop point and then there's an auger in there that feeds it back to the hopper mm -hmm. um but there are ways to have drop points like if you were feeding soil from another machine and it would, you know, put an insecticide in the soil, maybe put some fertilizer in the soil. It would be little mini, kind of like your push fertilizers. Yeah, like a little gravity flow box. Yes, and it'd be set for a certain amount to drop as the soil travels on a belt. Right. I've seen that. And, we, you know, we could do that one day. Right now, it's just not necessary. Yeah, we don't, yeah, because uh, there was some other questions, too, with that, about adding fertilizer to the soil. Yep. But like Jerry said, we, all the annuals are on a liquid fertilizer because, again, different annuals have different requirements on feeding. So he could feed, say, supertunias more than he would in patients, right? So that's why we, it's not a one-size-fits-all for that. And then another, a lot of questions were, were about like the, like, do we lose soil? Like, like debris as far as like with the potting machine, you know, falling off the conveyor belt mm. or all of this. And really there's very little waste with that because like at the end of the conveyor belt, it's coming the on one, a bucket, it, into a bucket. Well, yeah, the first conveyor belt though, it dumps in and it yes. puts in a hopper and then that hopper is fed back into the main hopper. So that's continuously recirculated where the soil actually dumps down onto it. And then the conveyor belt, like the long skinny one that we are planting on, we have a big, huge like Tupperware container at the end of that that catches that soil that will then dump back into the main hopper um, when that starts to get full. Right. And speaking of conveyor belts, I, I don't know how many comments we got along these lines, and this has already been running through our brain 10,000 times when we are using that potting machine. But Yvonne says, 
When the video sped up, I can't unsee when Lucy and Ethel got a job in the chocolate factory on the old I Love Lucy show. I bet this machine cuts your work time in half, if not more. Oh, that's more. Can't wait to see the plants go in. Yeah, that's way more. So, yeah, so we always joke about, okay, who's going to be Lucy and who's Ethel today? And yeah. yes, it, I can't remember if I have a question about that, but it, I think I do, it majorly cuts down our uh, production it is, time. It's a massive amount of time. Yes yeah massive so yes yeah lucy and ethel and yeah we have a lot of fun for sure um gardening fun says does this machine also add the plant plugs into the pots as well sorry if it's a silly question was That's just okay. surprised how many pots you showed us planted at the end of a recent video some very fast work yeah so it's just putting the soil in the pot and cleaning the pot as it comes out we plant it yes so the, 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 this particular and I've talked to another grower that grows Proven Winter product and I also grow some other smaller plants that come in there. And they have a transplanter that grabs the plants and puts them in a tray, but they cannot find a machine that will do that particular tray like of the Proven, proven winter. Winners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're, they're still being hand planted in big greenhouses. Yeah. There's a lot of technology out there and there are a lot of robotic arms that know exactly where to pick that plant up perfectly and to put it in the center of the pot. Um, we're not that. Yeah. <laughs> we're not to that point yet. No, nah, we don't need that. We don't need that. No. And we do, after all the years of, of what we have done, this is easy and fun compared to what we've yeah, been doing in the past. Yeah, it's got everybody on it. It makes everyone very productive. Yes. You know. So it's we're a, very focused. And when that machine is running, you do not want to be the person to say, stop. So everybody is, it's good peer pressure of everybody having to keep up and you have to stay yeah. focused. Because if one person on that line starts slacking and not doing their job, then that causes problems for everybody else. And so, and then too, obviously things happen, right? And so somebody may have to step out for a second and then other people jump in to kind of cover that person. So it definitely is a lot of teamwork involved with the potting machine. Next question um, comes from Kate and Kate says uh, Jackson looks like he is in hog heaven. He was. Um, I know this was sped up the time lapse on the video but how much time savings did you earn with your new helper the potting machine? So that particular order last year it took us like a week or a week a little over a week to do by hand so we had everyone there and it took us that day yeah it's not hours it's days yeah it, it's 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 a massive yeah and the great thing too is, is is that it takes a lot of people to run it in that fashion right so you need a lot of hands there for a day so that you can knock it out and then all those subsequent days we're all doing different projects. So we're off all doing different things and we don't have to, I mean, it's not like that whole group of team of 10 or whatever has to be together. So Jerry could be doing his thing. I can be filming a video. We have, you know, Randy helping out with checking plants and right. So there's all these different yeah. jobs that yeah, can be done. That was done. what my main reason for the whole thing was, was, was I knew it would do that. It would save us on time and then we can go on and do something else you know, take care and grow plants and, you know, go do videos and go do landscape jobs or, you know, just do our normal stuff around here. And then two, it was going to help our bodies, you know, yeah. so there was no more of this physical labor of putting soil on the table. That All the labor, the really hefty part of even that job is gone it's now. Gone. So that saves everybody and it makes everyone a little happier when we're working. And Right. We so, did have a comment somewhere because um, I had when that, that first time the machine came and I said, you know, we had so much fun today with the machine. Yeah. And somebody goes, that is not fun. Maybe interesting, but that is not fun. And we were like, no, it really is fun. Like even my 12 year old and my, you know, 15 and 18 year old teenage daughters go, no, it really is fun. So if you've done it the way we've done it for the last 17 years, when you get that equipment in and it makes your life so much easier, it truly is more fun. It's not interesting. It is fun. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, moving on to the landscape job. So um, we, y'all have been asking about us going um, on a landscape job with Jerry, and we've done one or 
two, maybe one. Right? We did, um, we did, several, we went to Janice's know. house and yeah. some different stuff. Um, but we, and some people were saying, you know, we didn't even know that you did landscaping, and we do it on a small scale. We really love to transform people's yards. Jerry mm -hmm. especially loves going in and just completely ripping out and then installing um, a brand new landscape in a very. That's short... really what we like to do. Yeah. I don't, you don't call me to come trim your we're not maintenance people we're not maintenance people we're not doing any of that kind of stuff we're we're there to redesign and make it look pretty right so we yeah. love talking with a with the homeowner <clears throat> and what garden are they wanting then designing that garden around what they want and their needs and then coming in and installing that so we had um went to this sweet little house in belmont which is a precious little town in our in our county and this house was right on main street so it was like like i said in the video we felt like we were in a fishbowl and um because there were so many cars going by. Um, but more than a ton of people, like a bunch of people were asking about, or making a comment like, we wish we could have seen it before or after. And like Judy says, will we be able to see it when it's completed? I really would like to go back this summer when things are full and the hydrangeas are blooming and the butterfly bushes are blooming. And, yeah, we'll see. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, but that day was a, that was an interesting day. And so we're just glad that the video got made in the very first place. Yeah, so yeah, it was an interesting day. It was uh, the way, way to start off a 2023 video of a landscape. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of times, I mean, when we're, when we're coming to a landscape job, we're here at the nursery, we're thinking about all the plants that that person needs and everything that needs to get there. All the equipment. All the equipment everything the people and everything so we haul over there and then we get out and man i am ready to go so number one i was supposed to shoot some video before we got started he was but, supposed to do but all i the, did have pictures the before but, but there's another thing that happened that really screwed up all that so anyway we get started we get going we're knocking this thing out we're we're, we're almost the entire well the entire front is done mm -hmm. except for the very big beds close to the street and we're working, I'm on my bobcat, and I'm coming up to the dump tray that has these flip down sides and you can get the mulch out. And we're getting the mulch out and everything. So it was getting further deep and I jumped up into the dump truck to get some more mulch and was moving it. And I stepped the wrong way and I, and I slipped and I came out of the dump truck and I landed on my side, on the side of the bobcat and then like, totally like could not talk i could not breathe i had it had just taken the just air knocked the wind completely oh, out of him yeah big time it was pretty you know it was it it was, a little it, was scary. it was a little scary there for a minute you know and for everybody and and they came and you know and i'm just trying to go on up to josh i was like get dog he said what he did not see what had happened so someone else told him what happened by that time i started to feel woozy and i'm about to pass out so we are on the front lawn on this main street and everything's going on and I'm <laughs> laid out laid in the out yard. The and so, yeah, it was, it was a big of a, there, and there was a moment there. So they were a little bit concerned that maybe I had done something to a rib that had caused some blood pressure well, issues yes yeah, yeah, so we'll say so too that so we have so josh is a former fireman first responder has yeah. all the medic training then we have um someone who is far into nursing school so he was in perfect hands um jenny was sitting in the salon chair getting her hair done and uh i was like don't call her she's fine just this she'll be you know, and then, but I had gotten up again and I got woozy again. So that's when they really got worried. So they called Jenny to get Jenny to come get me. By that time though, I had gotten up, moved around, blood pressure had come back up and I was okay. Yeah. So, but other than just being really sore. Yeah. And today, you know, it's just, it he's good. He's good. Better. So all is well, um, got some food into him and, and he, he does well. He doesn't deal well with traumatic events like physically you don't deal well with it because you get your blood sugar will drop and all this other stuff yeah. so um i wasn't overly concerned i mean i was concerned obviously but when i pulled up and he's standing up walking and talking then i knew that we were okay yeah. um, so he's fine everything's good he got so all, all checked out and everything's good he's just sore doesn't even video have to be bruising. was a little short in content on how we went about and did and it why hence i did not stop and say hey jerry 
come talk on the camera. Tell us all about this landscape job. Yeah, yeah I probably wasn't going to talk. <laughs> so that's really why there was no like before and afters because basically as soon as I got done doing the video, everybody sent us home and I was not then going to ask our landscaping crew um, to do you know after shots after shots when they had their hands full yeah. so we appreciate your understanding in that and um yeah so that's the backstory so that one didn't make the actual video but if you're watching this video then you you get a little behind the scenes on that one yeah um barb had a question about the landscape job itself um she says why no edging if they are not into yard and garden work this will be a mess soon yeah, so the homeowners have a choice in what they want to do, and we always do kind of recommend the hard edge where we take a either a shovel or our machine that cuts a natural edge so that you can, you know, it's, it just looks prettier, we think, natural in a yard with grass instead of the metal edging there. And fabric you never use. Now, if you're using fabric in a bed, you're that's inappropriate and should not be used in landscaping beds because it's, it's not a weed barrier it actually promotes more weed growth on the top because all your organic matter that sits on top of the weed barrier then turns into compost and weed seeds come from up in the air from wind that blow in there that germinate so then you have a bigger problem and then you're not getting the nutrients in your soil that your plants need and then you end up just doing stuff that's well and then like the edging too it's a lot easier to come in and like with the mower you can get right oh, up yeah, to much easier. that hard edge if you've got metal edging that mower can only get so close and then if you don't come back with a weed eater or a trimmer as jerry calls it then you've got grass growing up the grass will grow underneath the yeah, edging yeah. and so it can be i try I would to say never more, i always you know recommend the homeowner not to use metal edging between grass and the only time bed. we use metal edging is if there is like mulch and rock mulch and rock because you need that between those two yep um gia says um, that is awesome I bet it's fun for the homeowner or neighbors if they're gone for the day and come home to see the transformation yeah yeah that's that's one of the big things that we like to do now some jobs are just bigger and they take multiple days but if it's one you can get done in a day you can it's pretty cool cause it is can, really neat yeah yeah you work hard to try to get it done before they see it yeah, yeah. it's really fun and then um so that i think that was kind of all for the landscape and then one of the other kind of big announcements that we made this uh within the last month period is that we are going to be developing a proven winners signature garden keyword yes here yes. at the um just hold, hold your horses yes. hold your horses um here at the nursery um and so in that nursery tour judy asked what are the very best petunias for the landscape so without a doubt, if you're going to put petunias in the landscape, you definitely want them to be the super petunias. And with even in the super petunias, the Vista series is going to be your most vigorous, best landscape petunia on the market, hands down. Yeah. So, and if you need something, because um, I use both the Vistas and the Mini Vistas just in different areas, Vistas get nice and huge many vistas still are quite vigorous but more contained so different areas call for different applications but super tenias, vistas mini vistas are going to be your number one plant um, talking about the signature garden and us developing gardens within all of our property within that zone pat asked will you do something with the pond slash pond plants looking forward to the new garden so yes everything beyond the shrub lot is fair game for gardens and we have yeah. big plans on developing all of that both around the pond and pond plants and shade plants and all sorts of wonderful wonderful plants for sure yeah um Catherine said, congratulations. I'm so excited for you to have been chosen to do such an exciting project. You have such a beautiful piece of property and these gardens will make it even more spectacular. I'm looking forward to watching all the progress. Thank you for such wonderful videos. Yes. So let's talk about the signature garden and what does that mean and how much control do we have that goes into the garden and what kind of say does proven winners have with this signature garden? 
Well, the design aspect is 110% ours design part we're the we jenny and i are going to design and we are in a unique position to be able to design and install because we grow our plants mm -hmm. and we are we can design and make pretty landscapes so some places where the signature gardens are if they're at a resort or somewhat they're having to make sure they have a grower like ourselves somewhere close by that could grow the plants for them that they have to install in their Mm -hmm. landscapes so that I mean that's the only particular is it has to be proven winter plants but, in it, the doesn't ha, but it does not have to be 100 percent. no i don't know winters. what the exact percentage wise is but yeah so it's but, just it is a it's a way to it's highlight. a concentration of a highlighting of proven winter plants that's right annuals perennials shrubs and trees obviously there will be you know because you know different areas of the country have different you know different types of plants that grow there right so of course we are here in the south proven winters has gorgeous azaleas we can incorporate those in they have mm -hmm. one camellia that has just come out onto the market yeah. i'm going to want that camellia plus more and different camellias out there so they're proven winners no one company can produce every plant out there so you're going to have other plants that maybe they don't carry or you know they don't even have that kind of plan so we can have those so it does not have to be 100 percent proven winners and while if we ask them for recommendations oh, of yeah. design they would be they happy would. to help us yep. but they're not coming in and going oh no. no 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 you can't do that you have to do this or you have to do that all the signature gardens are very unique unto themselves that's what makes this whole thing so much fun so yeah so that's one thing to look forward to coming up we're going to do some videos on like really what is a signature garden mm -hmm. and different places and that kind of thing right. and leading up to because you know, we were we have been to a signature garden when we were in, on Mackinac yeah. Island last year um, the Hotel Iroquois they have a signature garden there yeah. on property and it's a nice little small mm -hmm. gorgeous right it is stunning of course that was Jack Barnwell's right that he has created and done and maintained beautiful but it is very and I don't, this is not a, it's just, it's a small, right? And then you have yeah, some signature a, gardens a that are, are bigger. And so each, but it's like, you know, the Iroquois obviously cannot have acres upon acres of a garden because that doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> you're on Mackinac Island, you have to have a small space. And so it's not about the size, it's about what you put in there and all the different elements within the architecture of a garden and interest in plants. So we will take you along. And like Jerry said, we hope to go visit other signature gardens. Um, that you can go along with us and see how they're each unique and different depending on where they are located. Yep. Yeah. And then Kay Jane, I got, oh my word y'all, y'all flipped out over this. I got so many comments and emails and private messages about this. Uh, so Kay Jane says, I love watching your channel and I'm so excited to get some of these beautiful plants, but I am totally distracted by your adorable hat. Gardening and crocheting are my passions. Did you buy this hat or did someone make it? I really need a pattern to make one. Thank you in advance for any information you can give me. Happy gardening. So it was a wonderful little accident that I found. I was on Instagram and this reel popped up of this woman who had made these beautiful crocheted hats so i tracked her down and she has a store on etsy and so um, when i went there all she had was infant hats there were no adult hats on there and because she had sold out so i'm stalking her instagram page because this was a right around christmas time and she said hopefully before christmas i'll be able to get some out and i'll let you know on instagram when they hit hit the storefront and so she uh i was able to grab one and i got it and i loved it so then on instagram she said okay i have like six hats going out and then it's going to be live at thursday at 10 a.m Honey, I was on Etsy at like 9.58, just sitting on her page waiting. So I was able to snag a couple of them, but I'll put the link in there. It's, um, I think it's Lisa's Naughty Knits. And so just the most precious hats that are so comfortable, so warm. The pom-poms, she hand makes them. I mean, just so stinking cute. So um, 
part of me hates to even tell you like where I got them because that's going to make it harder for me to get some in the future. But they are super cute, super well made, and um, they shipped out super fast and really cute. So um, yeah, I'll share the link in the video description for you on that. And I think that's it kind of for today. Yep. I think yep. that wraps her up. That wraps her up. All right. You know what time it is, folks. This is the afternoon. So it's Jenny and Jerry's coffee time. So um, as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. We're off to go get our afternoon coffee. Bye, friends.